Many call this the funniest movie ever made. And even though it came out 40 years ago, it remains a trailblazing cult classic that's enjoyed by movie buffs and comedy lovers all around the world. Look at that. Steady as a rock. Yeah, but I shoot with this hand. And we can all thank Mel Brooks for that. Responsible for a string of legendary comedies, but this hilarious, shocking, wall-breaking, oh my, did that just happen, Western? Just might be his magnum opus. Not only was it authentic frontier gibberish, it expressed a courage little seen in this day and age. I'm Nostalgic Nick, and today we're checking out the incredible cast of Blazing Saddles. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up, it really helps out a lot. And subscribe to the channel for more cast rewinds. But come on, let's giddy up. Cleavon Little Sheriff Bart is one of those characters that is just sharp as a tack, a master manipulator using all kinds of different schemes to outsmart his adversaries, especially Mongo. I mean, I could outwit Mongo. And now for my next impression, Jesse Owens. But so much success of this film goes to the partnership he and Wilder displayed. It's legendary and reminiscent of longtime comedy duos like Lewis and Martin or Crosby and Hope. Cleavon Little was a Cali boy who went to New York to study at Juilliard before winning a Tony Award on Broadway. And then small film roles took him back to Hollywood in the late 60s before gaining national attention on TV in the role of the irreverent Dr. Jerry Noland on the new Temperatures Rising show from 72 to 74. During that time, he began working on Blazing Saddles, but relatively new to film acting, Gene Wilder would give Cleavon pointers for acting in front of the camera. I'm glad those uh, fingers ain't loaded. And the two became lifelong friends. Some people ask how a white man, Mel Brooks, could write such shocking, alarming words in a film. Well, Cleavon won the role of Sheriff Bart over stand-up legend Richard Pryor, originally slated for the part. But studio execs were nervous over Pryor's reputation as an unstable, racy comedian, so Mel Brooks couldn't convince any studio execs of Pryor. But Richard Pryor still co-wrote the script, of course, and most of the racy, racial sheriff happenings. And it's this collaboration that makes Blazing Saddles so damn blazing. You've got to remember that these are just simple farmers. Cleavon never quite matched that success, but he did keep acting on the stage and TV, highlighted by his Sal on 1990's Baghdad Cafe. And then he won a primetime Emmy for his appearance on the sitcom Dear John in 1989. Cleavon Little was a hardworking and driven man, but unfortunately dealt with stomach disorders for much of his life. And the charming sheriff died at just 53 years old from colon cancer in 1992. But his legacy certainly lives on with the Cleavon Little Scholarship, providing assistance to minority students. And I know that his Sheriff Bart will be watched for generations to come. The new Sheriff is near, always. Alex Karras. If you shoot Mongo, you'll just make him mad. And that's just how NFL quarterbacks used to feel about Alex Garris. Cause he got his start as an NFL lineman and he wasn't riding the bench either. He was a five time all pro player and a first round draft pick. Unfortunately in 1963, he was made an example out of and suspended for betting on games. Mongo only pawn in game of life. But while being suspended, he tried out pro wrestling. And this is when he started to think about show business. Although he returned to football, he kept an eye on Hollywood. And in 1968, he made his silver screen debut in Paper Lion alongside Alan Alda. In the 80s, he starred as George Papadopoulos alongside his wife, Susan Clark, as the father of Webster in the ABC comedy. Do you remember? He even hosted Saturday Night Live in the 80s. He really did it all. Sadly, in 2012, Alex passed away due to kidney failure at 77 years old. And in 2020, he was finally entered into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Gene Wilder. The Waco kid was kind of a mess when we meet him. Obliterated to smithereens, cause people wanted to kill him cause he was the fastest draw. All culminating to a raucous tale about a six year old who told Jim to stick him up. Naturally, he threw down his guns and... Little bastard shot me in the ass. 
Yeah, that's the funniest monologue I have ever heard. Luckily, Sheriff Bart gave him motivation to crawl out of that whiskey bottle he'd been living in. Wilder began acting in 1961 and owes a lot to his friendship with Mel Brooks. In 1963, Gene co-starred in a stage production alongside Anne Bancroft, who introduced him to her husband, Mel Brooks. And this led to his breakout performance in The Producers, for which Gene was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Wilder talked about how he and Mel would go at it for hours trying to get the best line for his character. Truly a collaborative effort. 1971 brought his magical and delicious Willy Wonka. And three years later, he became young Frankenstein. My name, it's pronounced Frankenstein. Or however it's pronounced. And Gene also wrote and directed a number of films, like 1984's The Woman in Red. And in 1989, he starred alongside that legendary Richard Pryor. See no evil, hear no evil. His final role was a few episodes of Will and Grace in 2002. I'll try to be more considerate in the future. Beyond acting, Jean was married to infamous SNL goddess Gilda Radner. But terribly, she died in 1989 at just 42 years old, which severely affected him. He details this struggle in his book, Gilda's Disease. He also released his highly personal memoir, Kiss Me Like a Stranger, in 2005. Wilder passed away in August 2016 at the age of 83. His family reported that Jean died while listening to one of his favorite songs. Ella Fitzgerald, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And we're certain that Gene Wilder is somewhere over the rainbow right now. Slim Pickens. Taggart is your typical dumb henchman, but dumb as he may be, he's still pretty good at treating people beneath him like the scum of the earth. Well, boys, the break's over. Don't just lay there getting the sun tan. Ain't gonna do you no good no how. <laughs> Slim was born Lewis Burton Lindley Jr. and began acting in 1946. He started out in the rodeo business, deciding to try his hand at acting in hopes of landing some cowboy roles. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. One of his first notable roles was the classic 1964 Kubrick film Dr. Strangelove. Slim had a very busy film career, some highlights being 1961's One-Eyed Jacks with Marlon Brando, 1972's The Cow Cowboys with John Wayne, and The Getaway that same year with Steve McQueen. He also kept busy on TV, appearing in Bonanza and BJ and the Bear. And we have cast rewinds for both these vessels if you want to revisit Ponderosa or Bear. Slim Pickens remained a TV regular until his death in 1983. He was 64 years old. Harvey Corman. Mel Brooks wastes no time establishing Hedley Lamar as the villain of Blazing Saddles. He swears he's a genius, but I'm just not sure. Cutthroats, murderers, bounty hunters, desperados, mugs, pugs, thugs, nitwits, halfwits, dimwits. Now Harvey began gracing our screens with his comedy in 1959. He was a featured performer on the Danny Kaye show in the mid 60s, and then voiced the great gazoo on the Flintstones. But he became a household name and favorite when he became a regular player on The Carol Burnett Show. Shining bright in 240 episodes over a decade beginning in 1967. And we laughed our butts off watching Harvey trying not to laugh with Carol or Tim Conway. Corman had an operation in late 2008 on a non-cancerous brain tumor. But less than a day after coming home, he was readmitted with a ruptured aneurysm, only given a few hours to live. Well, Harvey survived another four months before dying at the age of 81. Thanks for the laughs, Harvey. Madeline Kahn. Lily Von Stoop is proof that a pretty face and nothing else will eventually go out of style. We learn in her big song that after all the hearts she's conquered, she's just over it now. I'm tired, sick, and tired of love. Madeline Kahn began acting in 1968, and her breakout role was in the Peter Bogdanovich acclaimed film Paper Moon. The following year, she teamed up with this crew for Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein. What a time! And Kahn's done a lot of stage work too, earning numerous Tony nominations. But she's best known as a Mel Brooks darling, once again shining in 1977's High Anxiety. In 1983, she starred as Madeline Wayne on the short-lived sitcom 
O. Madeline. Her final gig was a big arc as Pauline Fox on the show Cosby, appearing in over 80 episodes. Sadly, Khan's life ended early in December 1999 at the age of 57. She was diagnosed with ovarian cancer the year before and was undergoing treatment while working on Cosby. But Madeline Kahn made her mark on the history of comedy. Mel Brooks. The governor is your basic satire of a corrupt, incompetent politician. He could care less about the priorities of his land and cares more about beautiful women. Work, 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 work. Hello, boys, have a good night's rest. I missed you. Now, Brooks got his start as a comic and a writer in the greatest writer's room ever. In Sid Caesar's variety show, Your Show of Shows. Then, along with Carl Reiner, he created the comic character, The 2000 Year Old Man. Because if the good Lord meant man to fly, he would have given him tickets, right? <laughs> and also created the hit series Get Smart along with Buck Henry. The dude knows comedy, and we've already mentioned many of his hit films in this video, but we'll add Spaceballs and Robin Hood Men in Tights. You know you were meant for each other, you and Maid Marian. What a combination. Loxley and Bigel, can't miss. By 2001, he had joined the very small list of EGOT winners, deservingly winning an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. The man's so successful that three of his films ranked in AFI's top 100 comedies of the past 100 years. Blazing Saddles at number 6, The Producers at 11, and Young Frankenstein at 13. But in my opinion, they should all tie for number 1. Today, Mel Brooks is 95 years old. And what's more exciting is that he's not done making us laugh. He has two new projects in the works. One called Blazing Samurai, which is, you guessed it, inspired by this blazing comedy. And plainly, we love you, Mel Brooks. Never leave us. From Mongo to the excessive use of the N-word, to a bean-fueled fart fest around the fire. This film broke all the barriers and the fourth wall constantly. In that film stage crashing finale that occurs, it's a fantastic comedy with an even more fantastic cast. Did you know jazz legend Count Basie appears in the film? And also in 2017, Brooks indicated that he would love to adapt the film for a stage production. And we are on board. So tell us, what's your favorite line or scene from Blazing Saddles? Is it your favorite Mel Brooks film? Get in the comments and let's discuss. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss any of the fun. From all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching.